I'm not a doctor, but it just reminds me a little bit of what happened with Kevin, where it was a calf Kevin injury. Durant in the Kevin finals. Durant yep. injury that happened prior to the finals, though, mm -hmm. where it was a calf injury and it turned into an Achilles at later on down the line in the finals. And now you look at the situation with Giannis, because everything is attached to one another, and you say to yourself, okay, it, it's a calf injury, but, you know, what happens from a rehab standpoint in a medical standpoint to getting him healthy again, you just hope that it's not one of those that can carry over to something different because right. he is a big body. He uses his legs to jump around and do a whole lot of getting up and down the floor. So, you know, um, he was walking a little gingerly at times, you know, and, and grimacing. So you're sitting there going, man, I just hope it's not as severe as it may look. Mm. As you know, Achilles injuries are non-contact. They happen when you're all alone doing next to nothing. It doesn't look, it doesn't take any traumatic fall or you're just sort of trotting along and all of a sudden your Achilles goes. It can be the same for your calf. And you got three calf muscles, one's the soleus, and that's the one that they said he pulled or strained. And the three calf muscles come together at the Achilles. And then the Achilles goes down into your heel. And <laughs> if your calf muscles are weakened or they're strained, then, yeah, you're in danger of, of rupturing your Achilles. And that's what Kevin Durant did. He tried to force it to play a little faster than he should have on his pulled calf muscle. And the worst thing happened. Well, the worst thing could happen here. And I think the worst thing has happened to the Bucks this side of an Achilles tear. Keyshawn, I, I don't think he's going to be able to play in the first round of the playoffs. These things usually linger for three or four weeks. I don't think they'll, they'll rush him back the way they did Kevin, to your point. So if, if he can't play in the first round of the playoffs, that they've had a hard enough time with him on the floor. Do you think they can get out of the first round? I know it'll I'm be trying a to look to see who they. Yeah, I was it's trying almost to impossible. See, it's, I was it's, trying to see the matchup. It's mind blowing. It, it's who would too be much. their matchup? I don't if know. they can hold on to the two spot. Yeah, I don't think they're going to hold on to the two spot. They if they hold on to the two, would they draw like? I don't know who they draw like the Heat or something. It's too jumbled right now to even figure it out. But if they did draw the Heat, they yeah, it would be Miami. It would be Miami or okay. Philly. So you're in trouble with Embiid. I mean, obviously, Brooke Lopez could slide in that position, but you still would be... Embiid looks really good yeah, last night. Yeah, you would be... You would probably be in trouble. Miami, on the other hand, you know, they, their playoff team, Jimmy Butler, gets cooking. Well, he cooked them last year, right out of the playoffs. And what was it, in five games? Yeah, but it was a shocker last night to see that the way that they played without Giannis on the floor. I mean, they... they, they Ran they shop yeah, no, they on did. Boston, yeah. which a lot of us, especially myself, leaving yesterday, felt like, oh, okay, they they go, you know, pretty okay, much. You, you wipe suggested the floor. they shouldn't even play their their starters. Well, I thought that you know, okay. they, what are they? They fourteen did. games up. I why know. would I? Why would I even bother? Send one more message to Milwaukee, like. Well, they no, tried no, no, that; no. it didn't work. Okay, but if Porzingis didn't play, okay, there's and neither did Al Horford, but their starters played. But they didn't really play, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, they was kind of like out on the floor. They were just kind of out on the floor, which is back to the free throw situation. The Bucks committed only four fouls in this game. That was the fewest in league history. Okay, so they weren't shooting fouls, but they committed four fouls. Okay, how how do you get to the free throw line? If you're the visiting team, you have to force the action. Yeah, you go to the cup. You, most you of the time. go to the cup. Yeah. You you force referees to make a decision. And th th they'll make some in your favor where you're going to shoot some free throws if you're into the game. They didn't shoot none, though. They shot none because they were not into the game. And two, the entire game for, yeah. for Milwaukee, two. which was pretty two. funny. Yeah. The two combined attempts shattered the previous record of 11. The previous record was 11, which was set November 10th of 2019. <clears throat> Pacers shot five. Orlando shot six. So think about this. You've got 11 was the record, and they beat it by nine because they had only two. That's the just crazy. They swallowed their whistles. <clears throat> they swallowed their whistles. Okay, why? so here's, here's a Dame quote from after the game, and you can look at this two ways, but this was his quote. He says, 
fouls are not part of the game anymore. It's like I've had times where I thought I was getting fouled, and there have been other times when I was surprised a, a foul didn't get called on me, where I might bump somebody or get a piece of somebody's arm, and they don't call it. And I'm like, man, they're really just letting us play. Okay, there's some truth to that. Yeah, but not, but, but to call <laughs> no shooting fouls, you can't tell me if I go through the tape, you can't tell me I can't find yeah. some fouls in there that yeah. needed to be called. Jason Tatum had a couple of dunks where he thought he got fouled yeah. on the dunk, but they yeah. did not call it. Well, the Laker game last night, there was some fouls on both ends of the floor that was not called. I agree. They're going, what are you doing? Yeah, I told you on the, the Rui. The Rui dunk yes. with, with, uh, with uh, Payton Gary Jr. Payton Jr. Uh -huh. blocking, that was a foul. LeBron yep. got fouled a couple times. He did. Chris he Paul fouled. got fouled a couple times. Yep. I don't, I don't know. Okay, it's, is this the new NBA where they're just letting them play a little more football, basketball, where they're just letting them bang with each other? Just just let it go. I mean, it's 82 games, though. So okay. in 82 games, you, you're probably going to let them play some. Okay, so... But this is, this is okay, pretty so, wild. So what did Doc Rivers say after the game? That Adam Silver had to love this. Why? Because it, the, the whole game took an hour and 57 minutes. I know some nights when we have to stay up for a Laker game and it goes three hours. Three hours. And it's a march to the free throw line where I'm just like, J just, just stop it. Just let them finish the game. The point being, Adam Silver may be encouraging the referees to swallow their whistles to move the game along because he, he's all about the entertainment Okay, value. so if we swallow on the whistle, we can get at least 10 free throw attempts. Not two. Yeah. Can we get ten or zero? Or zero yeah. if you if you're yeah, Boston Celtics. Groups. You get zero free throw. Sh it's it's <laughs> impossible. It's it's like I. Yeah, I don't think I don't think if in fact he gave some instruction in conversation passing by, I don't think he said to do it to this degree. Yeah. You know, I don't think that they. He said, "Hey, no fouls." I don't think that that's the case. No. Unless you unless you look at it. You can look at it a lot of different ways and, and say, hey, it's a meaningless game to the Boston Celtics either way, so just don't bother calling fouls because they're, they're going to be in the first position anyway. Yep. I mean, maybe that was a conversation. <sighs> maybe. All right, so the Bucks had a classic players-only meeting ahead of this game, and they came out like they were ready to play ready to defend their home honor for once after they'd lost four straight games at home, including home games to Toronto and, and Memphis, where they just it looked like they were quitting on Doc Rivers. Well, they didn't quit on themselves, at least to open the game, because Brooke Lopez went Draymond Green, because you realize Brooke Lopez made his first four three-point attempts in the first quarter. Well, if he's going to do that, you're going to be in big trouble, and Boston was in big trouble. And Patrick Beverly also yeah. was knocking down. And threes. by the way, he got inserted last night for the first time into the starting lineup. I thought that was a shrewd move by Doc Rivers because I just love Pat Bev's energy. It just, again, is he the greatest player ever? No, is he the most skilled? Nope, he's not. But does well, he's he a try hard. play his tail he's off? He's a tryhard, and when you when you go out there and you give maximum effort, yeah. That's all the coach is asking for, for you to get maximum effort on both ends of the floor when you get an opportunity to score, score, and when you need to defend, defend. And that was and, what and he did last night. it's contagious for your team because you got somebody out there who's Westbrook trying. did the same thing. Hey, listen, He got into West the lineup for the first time since November as a Because starter. there was no James. He went 15, 15, and 15. Six, and you can 16. see the energy. Yeah, he, he... Was it 16? He had 16 points and 15 rebounds yeah. and 15 so assists. Six, 16, 15, and 15. <sighs> And, and, and so you can see the energy. You can just see That's everything. just pure, raw energy. And that's energy. the same thing that Pat Bev gives you. He, he brought it. And that's something that we, as a Laker, I believe we missing that, too. Yeah. We just missing that. So are you ready to write the bucks off? Because I'm, I'm there. I just don't think unless, they're going anywhere. Unless Giannis is hurt and not coming back, then yeah. If I just don't think back, he's. Yeah, I don't think he'll be ready for the first round of the playoffs. We're too well, depending, close. Well, it depending. It depends on the draw that they get. You know, it may go to six, it may go to seven, but I'm not ready to write them off, and I've never been ready to write them off because, as I said to you and Paul the other day, you know, I think Paul agreed. When you have veteran players that have been there and done that, they, regardless of what anybody tells you, they know how to turn the switch on. Yeah. You look at the Golden State Warriors yeah. late in the year; they understand. Yeah, we played around all year long. We're sitting in this position. That is but we've true. been there and done that. Yeah. The Lakers a year ago, 
they'd been there and done it. They turned the switch on after the trade deadline, they and they did. wind up in the Western Conference Finals because they had guys that have been in these positions before. When you think about Lopez and Middleton and, mm -hmm. and Dame Lillard, although, although he's never won a championship, he's been in deep playoff runs. And then, obviously, Giannis. Those guys, yep. they just know. It's just veterans just know. That's why, that's why, player, that's why coaches and front office executives like to acquire veteran players that have some experience at knowing how to do something. Sure. I, I, I'm with you, but this just feels wrong to me while Golden State feels right to me. Golden State has caught fire. And the problem with Milwaukee is they, they went and got Dame, and so it's, it's a big three that they have there with Giannis and Middleton and Dame. They have played all of 15 games together in an 82-game schedule. It's just not enough. It, it might not be enough. Mm. It might not be enough to win a championship, or maybe it is enough to win a championship. We haven't seen them in the postseason yet together. Now, let's see if they can all stay together in the postseason. We saw that they only played 15 games in the regular season, Skip. Yeah. You got to give them the opportunity and a chance. We know they're in the postseason, so they got seven games in the first round to show us at least seven games to yeah. show us that they can play together. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.